What's going on everyone? Welcome back to our San Jose Sharks franchise mode. We are in round number one. First time in the playoffs since year number one. Uh, so the San Jose Sharks fans are rather happy. I'm really happy. Team put up 51 wins this season. Finished second in our division. I believe third in all of the NHL. Hoping to improve upon that last year. But all this came because we fired our head coach, or not our head coach, fired our assistant coach and brought in Johnny T to come be our associates coach. So this is the team that we made it with. We got Dylan Larkin, William Eklund with Brock Besser, Riley Smith, Tomas Hurdle, and Max Domi, Lawson Krause with Jake Studniak and Noel Gundler, and then the fourth line, Max Jones, Jonathan Lekramaki, and Jesper Kakaniemi. And if you remember how our coach likes to do it, he likes the fourth line to come out first. So we always start every game, every period, with our fourth line out there. That's actually really interesting, something I, I don't really see done. Defensively, we had Ryan Merkley with Brett Pesci, uh, Tortson Svedberg, the number one overall pick, with Oliver Killington, Vili Hinola with Matt Roy. Goaltending, we had Jeremy Swayman back there with Dan Villard, and Villard, an absolute motherfucking beast, 14 and 1 this season. He 14 wins, one loss. This dude is the backup goaltender that we were been looking for. We were hoping that Stellaris would be last season. Uh, we do have Dmitry Samarkoyov, Dominic Kublik, and Willie Cooley on the bench. Kublik will be coming in probably for Gundler once uh, he becomes fully healthy. I don't remember when that was. When was it? When is he healthy? April 25th. Game four. That's right. He'll, he'll be back for game four of the first round. If our team is doing really good with Gundler, though, I'm not taking. I'm not going to be putting Kubelik in. Uh, that's just something I'm not going to be doing. Uh, taking a look at the Edmonton Oilers now, the team that we're going to be playing in round number one. They still will have those two fucking studs. Did I pass them? I definitely pass them. In uh, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, they're going to be the one-two punch on the first and second line as their centers. In the first line, they're going to have Dylan Holloway, 14th pick in the 2020 draft. This dude seems to be a fucking monster. Uh, on the right wing, they're going to have Casper Haltunen. He was the 12th pick in 2023 for the first round. Then they'll have Jesper Pull Harvey with Leon Dreisaitl and Kaylor Yamamoto. Third line will be Cam Atkinson with Xavier Bugalt and Zach Hyman. Fourth line will be Simon Knack with Mitai, Mitaj Pekar and uh, Richard Raquel. Defensively, they got Essa Lindell with Philip Broberg, Evan Bouchard with Mickey Anderson, and then Darnell Nurse with Derek Forbort. The uh, goal teddy wise, they got Alex Djelkovic and Colton Ellis in that scratch. They'll have E2 McIniemi, ooh, running three goaltenders this year with Logan Hutsko and Wyatt Kulianak. See a backup goalie? He's considered a backup goalie. How has he been doing? So we bounce back and forth between the NHL and AHL for us. Uh, good in the AHL, went 7 9 and 2 when he went to Florida. Uh, then he came over to Edmonton, finished right about 500. Okay, yeah, that's about what we were expecting with his career. So too bad for 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 him. I was really hoping he would turn into a D, like a really good backup goaltender, just never wound up happening. Uh, based off of what I'm seeing here, they spent a lot of money on defense and their top six. All right, their bottom six, however, is very weak, and we need to take full advantage of it every time we are out there against their fourth line we need to make them pay whether it's drawing a penalty or fucking putting up some points defensively very solid all around except for this four board dude 36 but he's 36 years of age that's just a depth move this dude's gonna help them in the playoffs just because of how fucking old he is and he's been around the league they're actually his their defensive core is like all in their prime 33 28 28 26 33 36 yeah, they're 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 making this push full of depth players. So I'm not too worried about it. I think that we should be walking out of here pretty victorious. Again, if they're gonna win and they're gonna beat us, they're gonna beat us because of the top six line. So let's get into game number one at home against the Edmonton Oilers. First period. 
It's going to be 1-1, all right? Broberg scored on Swayman, but then our defenseman, Brett Pesci, wow, 16 seconds left in the period. Probably just trying to get a shot on goal. Going to get one by Nijelkovic. Second period with the shots in favor of Edmonton. We take the lead 4-2. There we go. Another defensive goal by Ryan Merkley. Uh, Holloway is going to score from the corner. Max Jones and Besser then going to put a pair in the net with just under 11 minutes to go. There we go. Fourth liner, first liner. Love it. And the third period. We're going to slow sim it because it's the playoffs. Tomas Hurdle scores right away in the first period. Gives us a three-goal le leap. Five on three power play. Domi going to score on, on the first power play. Second one will be killed off. Ryan Merkley now putting one past Najelkovic. 7-2. to two. Power play again to San Jose. Killed off. And we are running away with this game. In two periods of play, Edmonton has had 10 shots, as you just saw. And before that, before the last three minutes, it was only six additional shots. We ran away with this game offensively. 36 to 20 in shots, and they only had 10 shots in the first quarter. I mean, the first period. So that means in two periods, they had the same amount of shots that they had in one. So we walk away with a big old dub. Ryan Merkley getting a pair of goals tonight. There we go. He gets the first star of the game. Second star is Brock Besser. Third star, Riley Smith with three assists. There we go, Riley. Now, Riley Smith obviously on our team. Because of Timu Meyer's demand of a trade. Kind of sucked. But uh, what are you going to do? San Jose player Brett Pesci. Bruised hand and is estimated to return May 6th. You fucker. So he is gone for a, an entire month. We just lost our top defenseman for the second time this year. For almost an entire month. God damn it. Okay, okay, okay. It's fine. It is fine. We will make this work. Boom, boom. So offensively, that's fine. Defensively, Spedberg. Shillington. Nola. And then we swap you two. So Killington and Spedberg. Merkley with Samrakov. Hinola with Roy. There we go. Should keep everything the exact same, just about. Just going to replace Brett Pesci for round number one. It's pretty much all that's happening. So, game two, still at home. We just had a huge 7-2 victory against the Edmonton Oilers. Looking to do it again. First period, still at home. We're going to take the lead 2-1. to one. There we go. Ryan Merkley, third goal in two games. There's Riley Smith getting himself a fucking goal in round number one. And then there's Leon Dreisaitl again. So like I've said, it's been their defenseman and top six thus far for Edmonton. Shots 11 to 8 in our favor. Second period. Ooh, Edmonton's going to tie it. Short-handed goal for Lindell. Just a nice, easy sh shot on net. Fucking going to put one in. Paul Harvey scoring from the top of the circles too. Luckily, we're able to tie it thanks to Max Domi grinding down there in the slot. So third period tied 3 to 3. Come on, power play to San Jose. That one's killed off. We do have the shot advantage. Final 10 minutes in the third period. Still a tie game. Who's going to be the hero? Who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? It's going to be Max Domi. There we go. Max Domi getting a fucking shot on and scoring a goal. Now we're going to jump in. Final two minutes of play. One minute. Uh, well, final two minutes of play in the third period. Let's just go see how this one's going to go. Maybe Edmonton ties it up. Fucking forces overtime. Maybe we fucking score another goal. All right, here we go. 2.45 left in the third period. Face off won by Edmonton. Hit off. Svedberg over to Studniak. Studniak's got space. Saucing over to Kraus. Kraus toe drags. Tries to go 5 0 No good. Kraus pinned behind the net. He'll throw it around. Picked up by Anderson. Anderson moving it to Bouchard. Here comes Edmonton the other way. Dry cycle. Tries to cut to the middle. Hit. No good. Hyman. Hit away as well. Hinola throws it away into the corner. Gunlet up to Lawson Kraus. Kraus just going to dump it into the zone. Might see a line change here. Nice four check by San Jose. By Edmonton. Still going to break out with ease. One minute remaining in the third. San Jose intercepts that pass. Here comes Gunler. He's going to dump it back into Edmonton's zone. There we go. 
dump and chase working right now. Lawson Krause gets in, swings around the board. Dreisaitl's going to beat him to the puck, get it out of the zone, and there's Hanola passing to Svedberg. Now over to Studniak, 30 seconds left. Studniak gets hit off the puck. Anderson, long with it in his corner, passing to Dreisaitl. Here comes Edmonton, 25 seconds, pulls their goal. Zach Hyman, Poten, Ra Raquel shot blocked by Hyman. <clears throat> Battling for it down the corner. Svedberg has it. Can Svedberg get his first playoff goal? And he will whiff on it. The initial shot, but the rookie, Svedberg, will get his first playoff goal. It will be an empty netter. Holy shit, I can't believe it. He whiffed on the first shot before getting it in there. So at San Jose will walk away with a 2-0 advantage in the series. Let's fucking go, San Jose. Fucking killing it right now. We're showing we can do it against a really good, a really good player. Again, I think their depth is a little iffy, but we haven't been on the road yet. We don't know how they are in the whole building. Gotta be ready for it, boys. It's not over till we're hosting that cup. So big dub there, went from a 7-2 win to 5-3 to three win. But we got a hit on the road now. Riley Smith, five points in two games for that fucking dude. Fucking love to see it down there on that second line. But either way, anyways, game three, we are now traveling to Edmonton for game three and four. We need to win at least one of these road games, okay? So first period... We're going to go up one nothing. There it is. Matt Roy. There we go. Top six defenseman coming in for clutch. Going to get the first goal. Second period. Still a one nothing game. Shots are in favor of Edmonton. 27 to 12. So their goaltending has let them down thus far. There we go. Max Domi going to get one. There we go. Three goals in two games now for Domi. Power play to San Jose. Now they're up. Or now that we're up by two, power play to Edmonton. Holloway's going to score, making a one-goal game. Come on. Shots are still in favor of Edmonton. Max Domi scoring his second of the period, giving us a two-goal lead again. And we will walk out of game number three up, well, now up three to nothing in the series. Fucking loving to see it. So three to one lead. Fucking clutch, fucking clutch. Third period, Jeremy Swayman. Got the first star of the game, Max Domi, second star, Holloway with the third star of the game. Fucking loving it right now. Uh, San Jose player, Vikoshlev Kostian. That is a AHL player. Yep, fourth line AHL player getting hurt. Again, just do that. T.S. Omen. want you on that first line. There you go. All right. And how are we doing down there in the AHL? So AHL-wise, we're up 2-1 to one in our series. So AHL's up 2-1. NHL up 3 to nothing. Chance to sweep the Edmonton Oilers here today. We will not be putting Kublik back in the lineup because the team is playing very good. Uh, the Jets swept the Avalanche. Okay, so right there, that was the only team to have a sweep. So the Western Conference, only team thus far to have a sweep with Winnipeg beating the Avalanche. So congratulations to the Winnipeg Jets moving on. No other team besides us has an opportunity to close it out right now. So game number four still in Edmonton. We will be looking to bring out the Brooms. First period. We go down one nothing. This is the first time Edmonton has taken a lead at the end of a period. Shots are 12-4, to so they are doing really good. 
shot-wise at home. They did really good last time. They did really good this time. So Pearl, uh, Pearlberg, another defenseman to score for Edmonton. Second period. We're still down by one. That's Darnell Nurse scoring. Still a defenseman for him. Then Max Jones getting a, one on Najelkovic from a weird angle with just under six minutes to go. Let's go, boys. Third period. We are down by one. We need one. There we go. Vinny Hinola tying it up against Najelkovic. There it is. Sam Rakoff scoring now. Same spot just about from Hinola. Brock Besser scoring. Holy shit. San Jose running away with it in period number three. And we will be walking out of here victorious. And we will be moving on to round number fucking two. Let's here in the late goings of the period. 4-2 is the score. Edmonton's won the draw in the neutral zone. The Oilers looking against the half wall. And we'll get the whistle after the goaltender hangs on. Teams are ready to go, and we're about moments away from puck drop. The frozen biscuits dropped, and we are back underway here. The Oilers carry it along the wall and makes the save. The Sharks win the draw. Edmonton's got possession here in the offensive zone. Breaks up the momentum. And now he tries to get it across to Jones. Inside the offensive zone. And as the dying seconds tick away, they can exhale as they're moving on to the next round. Just slide to the net. The Oilers can only shake their collective head. That's another chance, and they don't get anything for it. It is all over. Edmonton's performance seemed to be good enough to win, but they just can't find a break. No, what they're finding is the way to lose. Again, they played well, it's a close loss, but they found the way to make the big mistake at the worst time. Great night of action on the ice, and we hope you certainly enjoyed it from your viewpoint. From all of us, Ray, Carlin, I'm James. See you next time. So with war round number one over for us, we will be paying a little bit more attention down here to the AHL squad. Looks like they're up three to one. That's fucking nice. So our AHL squad might move on from round number one as well. But we'll also be paying attention to what's happening around the league here. Chicago took a three to one series lead against the Stars. Hurricanes took a three to one series lead against the New Jersey Devils. So we're just going to advance it up two more days. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Perfect. All right. So down here in the NHL, what's happening? What's happening? Florida took a 3-2 series lead on the Islanders. Rangers took a 3-2 series lead on Columbus. And Vancouver took a 3-2 series lead on the Calgary Flames. Now, AHL squad, this is a road game for a chance to clinch round number one, move on to, or advance to round number two. First period going to spl be split 2-2. Two -two. There's Omen scoring and Guriev. Ooh, Guriev getting one in. Second period still tied 3-3. Sven Pedersstrom scoring on Bjorklund. So anyone that's a fan of our NHL squad obviously is cheering him on. Uh, well, cheering on our NHL squad, but if they're paying attention to the AHL squad and our prospects, that's two big goals right now from Sved, uh, not Sved, from Pedestrom uh, and from Omen. Third period, still tied, nothing to nothing. You know, uh, do, do I do it? 
You know what? I, you guys can skip it if I want, but I'm going to include uh, the f overtime period against these guys. Uh, it won't be me commentating. It will be Doc. So just skip to after the game if you don't want to hear all that. Uh, and we'll jump back into just talking and everything. OT should tell us who wins and who loses, and they're ready to get it underway. Oh, the anticipation ramping up in this barn. You can just feel it right now. Moment of truth for both sides. Sudden death over time. Let's get it on. Keeps hold of the puck. And now he moves it quickly to Jensen. Into the offensive zone down the right wing. It's a contact sport, people. There's proof right there. Pokes the puck away. Gives him a jolt with that hit. Moves the puck. On the attack along the boards. Couldn't complete the pass. Oh, smart heads that play to poke that one away. And that battle along the wall comes to an end. Receives the pass. Looking to end it. Score! Turn out the lights! This one's over! They needed overtime, but what an effort! In a one-game showdown, the best team doesn't always win in those cases. This case, the best team did. I would agree. When you get into multiple games against the same opponent, flukes go out the window, and the team that deserves to win likely does. Well, this one's in the books. A fun one tonight for Ray Ferraro. My name is James Sabalski. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Good night. And there we have it, off to round number two for the San Jose Barracudas and the San Jose Sharks. So, San Jose fans fucking loving fucking hockey right now. Absolutely loving it. So, let's see. We got to advance it one more day, see who's going to be advancing. Stars making it a series again. It's making a series, uh, it, uh, making it a series again. They're bringing it up two to three now for them. New Jersey two to three. Tampa up three two. Rangers are three two. Florida's three two. Okay, okay. So everything is coming down to the wire. April 29th. Let's see. Vancouver beats Calgary four to in six. So okay, congratulations to Vancouver. Over in the Eastern Conference, Florida is now tied with the Islanders. Columbus now tied with the Rangers. Are we going to see a comeback? Are we going to see a comeback? Chicago beats the Stars in six. So Western Conference is finished. Let's take a look and see what's happening in the Western Conference. Who's playing who? All right, so the Chicago Blackhawks will be taking on the Winnipeg Jets. And we will be playing the Vancouver Canucks. Okay, what's going on in the Eastern Conference? Everyone's going to Game 7 over in the Eastern Conference. Okay, so Eastern Conference hockey for television. Yeah, everyone's loving it. Uh, Florida will beat the Islanders in 7, and Columbus will be beating the New York Rangers in 7, so both of them avoid being embarrassed. But let's see what's going to happen here. Final day of round number 1 hockey. Tampa against Boston. New Jersey against Carolina. Round number one is up. All right. New Jersey's going to lose, and the Lightning are going to lose. Okay. So, Eastern Conference, Columbus Blue Jackets versus the Carolina Hurricanes. It will be the Florida Panthers versus the Boston Bruins as well. So, that's, that's pretty clutch. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the Vancouver Canucks real quick, see what the team that we're going up against will be having for us. 
So pretty similar. Their bottom six, not as strong as their top six. They definitely have, well, they definitely have more depth than the Edmonton Oilers on offense. Uh, who is this guy? Kim Hornquist. 23rd overall pick in 2024. Three goals in six games for him on that fourth line. All right, so their team's not that bad. I wouldn't say it's anything spectacular offensively. Still think we have the edge offensively. Defensively, they got Jacob Bryson with Justin Falk, Sean Walker with Quinn Hughes, Connor Carrick with Ian Mitchell. I think we should be walking all over them defensively too. Goaltending's probably, yep, yeah, there it is. Goaltending's what's fucking bailing them out right now. Connor Hellebuck, possibly 91 overall goaltender. He's got an X factor. I'm sure of it. I just don't know his X factor. They're right now, our scouts are saying he's a contortist, contortionist, but I'm not sure. But Connor Hellebuck is one of the best goaltenders in the league. He's probably putting the team on his back and is the reason why they are where they are right now, round number two. We will be looking to continue our sweep streak. Um, let's see if we can do it. We will be on the road against Vancouver. So where they finish? Where did the Vancouver Canucks finish? Uh, they finished last in our division. So why do they have home ice advantage? Okay, that's a little weird. We're supposed to have home ice advantage because we finished higher than them. Uh, in our division, so that's a little weird. The Vancouver Canucks are placed higher than us, but whatever. It's a video game. They're gonna fuck up. Uh, but either way, William Eklund leading our team with eight fucking points right now. Eight goddamn points. There you go, buddy. That's what I like to see. Hopefully this year, maybe, maybe his potential jumps up to a franchise. That would be pretty nice. Just have one year franchise development from him. Max Domi and Riley Smith on that second line. Absolutely fucking killing it up. Goal scoring leader Max Domi with fucking five goals right now. Dude, this dude is a fucking beast. And I think he had a career year with us. Not quite a career year, but going back to his Montreal Canadian days, similarly, his younger days, he had a good bounce back season. He's had one of his better seasons than he has in the past little bit. So that's awesome to see out of you, Max Domi. You're playing so, so fucking well. Um, and out of that, what's the plus minus looking like? Connect, Jones, Lecrim. Okay, so the fourth line. Fourth line's a minus one. That's completely fine. Kakaniemi doesn't have a single point. He's the only guy on our fucking squad that doesn't have a point, too. So that's a little upsetting to see Kakaniemi that happening. But whatever. It is what it is. Um, something I don't think I did last uh, episode, since this one is pretty short, is look at the NHL um, not points wise and everything so just in case i didn't the end of this one we will now be looking at mark shifley 120 fucking points for the winnipeg jets holy shit holy shit that is a lot of points mark shifley 120 plus minus we'll go to mark shifley plus 60 assist leaders mark shifley with 82 uh, goal leader will be Austin Matthews with 56 most penalty minutes will go to Jamie uh, Olet Alexiak, as well as Igor Chinekov with 72, who had the most shots. Most shots was Sal Hyanik with 346 shots. He was the number one overall pick back in 2026. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, best power play point guy was Mark Shifley with 31. Most power play goals, Austin Matthew with 18. Most game-winning goals was Connor McDavid with 10. Most short-handed goals. There's a bunch of ties. Dylan Larkin doing good things short-handed. Three goals for him. Tim Stutzel had three. Ryan Hartman had three. Alexander Romanov had three. Uh, Mikhail Misa had three. He was the second overall pick back in 2025. And Nazem Kadri had three. Short-handed points. It was only goes to two. Ryan Hartman and Sebastian Ajo. Both on the same team for the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, let's take a look at defensemen who had the most points as defensemen. Charlie McAvoy had the most points as a defenseman, 82. Most assists, Charlie McAvoy, 71. Most goals by a defenseman, Dougie Hamilton again. Ooh, Dougie, 19 goals. He's playing on New Jersey. Best plus minus as a defenseman went to Vince Dunn. 
Most penalty minutes as a defenseman, 72, Jamie Olsevik. Yep, game-winning goals as a defenseman, Rasmus Dahlin. He was the big free agent signing this year. What do you get signed to? Seven years, $12.445 million for Rasmus Dahlin. Holy shit. Um, most power play goals, there's a tie. Shea Theodore, Dougie Hamilton, and Tori Krug with six. Uh, power play points, three-way tie. Dougie Hamilton, Charlie McAvoy, and Noah Hannafin. Which defenseman was good shorthanded? Alexander Romanoff, three shorthanded goals. Uh, points shorthanded. Alexander Carrier, Al Adam Peck, and Alexander Romanoff. What's going on with Carrier? How did he do this year? Carrier had a big, big bounce back year after getting fucking traded from San Jose. Seems he just didn't like San Jose. Went from Nashville to San Jose to Boston. Now he's in Boston. He's fucking putting up 43 points. Man, fuck Carrier, man. Fuck Carrier. Uh, looking at goaltending, the winningest goaltender where it was a two-way tie between Connor Hellebuck and UC Soros. I would make an argument that Soros actually was better than Hellebuck just because of the uh, less losses and a additional shutout. Um, let's see. Shutout leader, Thatcher Demko with eight shutouts on the season. Uh, best plus minus will go to Jake Ottinger, 919. Goals against average will go to Tristan Jari with a 2.43 goals against average. Uh, who had the most points as a goaltender? Two ties, all right. Ilya Sorokin and Ivan Kravinov. Uh, most assists, yep. Any goals? Any goals by a goaltender? No goals by a goaltender, all right. Uh, rookie skaters. Rookie of the year will be going to Murray Corburn, center from the Ottawa Senators, 65 points. Uh, most goals by a rookie goes to Johan Halvardsson. Okay, left winger. Most assists, Murray Corburn with nine. Best plus minus, though, Torsten Svedberg. There we go, plus 15. Best plus minus by far. Uh, penalty minutes, he's also up there for penalty minutes. Oh, second most, that's not good. That's not good at all. That's not good. Uh, but that's going to be it for this year. Uh, well, for this year's points, for regular season, and for round number one of the playoffs. Next time, we will be taking on the Vancouver Canucks in round number two, where I hope that we will be getting a big old dub against them. Uh, but until next time, guys, see you later. Bye-bye.